Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. And today I just want to give you like an update on some products that I have introduced to you guys over the last couple of months here on my channel. Probably uh, said I was testing it, trying it out, or maybe a product that I was excited about but not quite ready to share my full thoughts on. Well, today I'm ready. <laughs> and I struggled between calling this video products I wanted to love and products I changed my mind on. Um, so these are all products that, um, yeah, definitely I had high hopes for. They're not all complete duds, I will admit, but I definitely have some complicated feelings to work through about them. And I'm gonna share everything with you today. So if you guys are so ready, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. <music> So let's start off with the One Thing H. Cordata Extract. Yeah, now this is actually, this is becoming super popular in the Korean skincare community. Have you guys noticed this is showing up all over the place? This is such an intriguing product and you saw me uh, feature this in my Would You Be My Valentine uh, video that I did about skincare that I was really crushing on at the time. So the brand One Thing is all about one ingredient focused products. They focus in on just one star ingredient ingredient and really kind of let the power of that ingredient shine. So they do focus in on single extract essences like this one. So it's H. Cordata extract, 100% extract, some uh, preservatives and water, and that's it. They also have a centella one, a mugwort one, a niacinamide one. Um, they've got a couple of other ones too. And I do have a few of those on hand uh, for testing purposes that, that was sent to me. But I will be honest with you, I haven't opened them up. <laughs> I just focused in on this one. You may be familiar with H. Cordata extract under the name Heart Leaf. Um, it, that's what they call it in K-Beauty and it's so much easier. <laughs> so much easier than H. Cordata because it's such a funky kind of name to try to, you know, get your mouth around, right? So heart leaf extract is a great anti-acne ingredient that's incredibly gentle. It's anti-inflammatory. It reduces redness. It's antibacterial, but it's gentle. It's actually not an astringent ingredient. It does not strip moisture from your skin. And in fact, it actually helps your skin's hydration level. So it's a nice hydrator. So all things that are super Super intriguing and I have been familiar with this ingredient for a couple of years because throughout all of my like in-depth testing and you know I'm very ingredients focused kind of skincare connoisseur and um, I love to know how things tick and why products work for me you know as good or as bad as they do and you know through the different kinds of products that I have used throughout the years that have helped me when I am breaking out when I am getting pimples I have found there's a few different ingredients that work really well for me, but I have found a common denominator through quite a few different products was this H. Cordata extract. So lots to get me excited here, right? I mean, I love single extract types of products. Um, I have quite a few, you know, that I love already. I always rave about that Misha Mugwort essence. And, um, you know, the ingredient itself is something that I have been intrigued by and have had a lot of success with in the past. So obviously you can see how I'd be interested in this. Just a quick side note, um, how the heck do you use this product? Because it's not even called an essence or a toner or anything. I've actually seen it advertised on YesStyle as a toner. That's probably one way that you can use this. I use it actually like an essence because even though the ingredient itself can help your skin's hydration levels, because there aren't any like other humectants in this product, um, I don't find it to be a well-formulated toner. They do really kind of like try to make this a little bit more unique and try to kind of like position it as a product that you can, um, you know, put a couple of drops into a serum or a different toner. You can make a mask out of it. You can um, do all kinds of different things with it. You can mix the different one thing products together to make your own kind of essence concoction. So it is a little bit more of a unique product in that sense, but I'm pretty boring and I just kind of used it like an essence. So these are all points that I shared when I was very excited about this product a couple of months ago um, and definitely something to get excited about. Now that I've used it more, I have more familiarity with it, I will say, uh, yeah, my mind has changed a little bit on this and it definitely deserves an update. And I can really boil it down to, to like two main reasons why my opinion has um, 
you're not fully changed, but just like my excitement about it has cooled down quite a bit. So the number one thing is that I think that H Cordata extract as excited about it as I am and as much success I've had with this ingredient, I don't really think that it's a worthy star ingredient. Like, I think it's a really good team player. Do you know what I'm saying here? Because this is a 100, it's not even a high percentage H Cordata product, it's a 100% H Cordata product. And I think that this is an ingredient that gets along well with others because I have gotten great results when it's mixed with green tea and centella, when it's mixed with propolis, but just on its own, I did not get what I have kind of found to be the characteristic heart leaf benefits a little bit, but not as wow as you would expect a 100% just H Cordata product to be. The benefits just, they were there, they were nice, okay, but I just feel like I should have been blown out of the water. You know, maybe I have high expectations, I don't know. So the second reason why I kind of say my mind has sort of changed on this product is actually something that I only recently discovered when I used this on my skin when it was um, already a little bit sensitive. Now, I do have sensitive skin, just generally speaking, but I can become more prone to irritation, especially with seasonal changes. Um, and that's definitely what's happening right now with my skin. I went through a little uh, period where I was like, any little thing is gonna tip my skin off. So like, I'm just gonna be very, very gentle to it. Um, but I actually, you know, I consider this to be a very gentle product and I did um, start to use this again and I started to have some issues. And really what I was noticing on my skin was more dehydration and um, my skin was actually kind of red. Not like irritated, allergy, rash red, but just, you know, you notice a little bit more redness on your skin because your skin's just a little bit more inflamed. So those were the symptoms that I was noticing and actually took me a hot second to trace it back to this product because I didn't want to believe it. Do you know what I mean? So let me tell you about the smell. <laughs> it seems like I'm going off topic, but I'm not. So this actually is a very um, potent, strong smell. And I don't know what heart leaf is supposed to smell like. I don't know what that raw ingredient is like, but I will tell you, this has a very distinctive smell and it really kind of triggered some like sense memory, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. And then I realized what it was. It took me a long time. It smells like a margarita, not like the stuff you get in a bottle or anything like that. This smells like tequila, triple sec, lime juice, and a really nice salted rim glass. You know what I mean? It's all those scents together is what this reminds me of. So anyways, why do I bring that up? because it actually kind of reminded me that a lot of extracts are actually extracted in alcohol. And now this is normal. <laughs> this is not like uncovered, you know what I mean? Like we're not exposing anything here. Just, I wanna be clear about that. Most extracts are extracted in alcohol. It's excellent for that because more things can dissolve in alcohol. So alcohol can really get a lot of the good potent stuff from the base ingredient. Whereas water, much more diluted, right? So it's not gonna get as potent of an extract. A lot of the skincare you're probably already using with extracts in it have been extracted in alcohol, but because it's in a smaller amount in an overall formulation, it's one of 20 ingredients, right? With other ingredients in it, it's like undetectable. But when we're dealing with a 100% extract with nothing else going on that might have been more highly concentrated in alcohol, there is a chance that some of that is maybe coming over into this product. And I cannot be more clear about this. I use this for many, many weeks with no problems. I used it when my skin was a little edgy, you know what I mean? And then I had a problem with it. So I still think this can work for a majority of people, even if you don't like alcohol in your skincare, just if you're super duper sensitive, if you're like kind of going teeter tottering into irritation, this actually might not be good for you. It might actually make the problem worse. So this is kind of a big warning that I want to put on it. And it is a little bit like super deep dive. Like I said, the majority of people probably won't have an issue with this at all, but I think it's worth bringing up because <laughs> when you have sensitive skin, you know, you got to be really careful. So all that being said, I don't think that this is a bad product. You know what I mean? I'm not putting this on blast or anything. There is just some like key things about this. I really think were important to bring up because I did introduce this uh, and I was very excited about it. And I still think it's a good 
product. I just don't think it's a great product. I'll be honest with you, I don't think that it is. But all that being said, I am still curious to try. I do have the Centella one and the Mugwort from this brand. I am curious to try those because those to me have demonstrated that they're worthy of being a star ingredient, right? Um, whereas this one was a little bit more like, mm, never seen that before. So maybe not my favorite. I'm going to keep playing around with it when my skin is not so irritated um, and see if there's maybe some other uses for maybe mixing it into toners and things like that. So, you know, don't be surprised if this shows up again. I'm not like completely giving up on it, but two really important updates that I thought you guys should know about. Next up is the Paula's Choice Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid. This is a sunscreen. <laughs> you couldn't tell by the name. This uses four different chemical filters. It's SPF 50 and it is broad spectrum. This is a Western sunscreen, so we don't have a PA rating here. Let me talk about the texture a little bit because I actually find this kind of unique and it sort of reminds me of the Anessa Milk sunscreens because this is called a fluid it is it's a fluidy milk type of sunscreen and it does remind me of the Anessa mild milk too because you remember when I talked about that one in my more recent sunscreen video and I said you know you're rubbing it into your skin and you're a little bit worried that it's going to turn oily on you because it's got this like slip to it but then it dries down um like matte or kind of powdery and then like no oiliness in sight that's this this is a very similar texture to that. Super fluidy, it feels creamy, it feels a little oily. You're thinking this might be a little bit rich on the skin, but then it actually dries down to like a, almost like a, a, a light silicone silkiness on the skin. And I think they actually say that this kind of like helps fill in your pores. So it makes sense that it would kind of have that little like smooth finish to it. Now I've actually seen people review this very positively for oily skin. I do want to bring up though that, um, you know, it wasn't really a shininess on my skin and it definitely didn't like when it dried, it didn't feel oily, but like throughout the day, I don't know if it was, it was one of two things. It made me more oily or it just didn't quite like fully like settle into my skin and maybe it was just sitting a little bit more precariously on top of my skin. And maybe that's why I felt like there was just like a little oiliness to the top of my skin when I was wearing this. I thought I would bring it up, but I mean, I will say I saw a lot of people say that this is good for oily skin. So this is potentially a Kelly problem and not necessarily a Paula's Choice problem. It definitely has a heavy sunscreen scent. That doesn't really bother me, but it is worth noting. And um, I definitely got some pilling with this one. And it wasn't terrible, but I definitely did get a little bit with this one, especially when I was putting like some makeup on top of it. So that's kind of like a big drawback to this one. So so when I first introduced this on my channel, you know, I was very excited about it and my testing with it had actually been going really well so far, but I did realize like the more that I was wearing this, I was actually starting to feel like my skin was like kind of low key, burning, tingling, itchy. You know what I mean? Like it was getting irritated. It was very subtle. It was very subtle, um, but it was kind of building up like every day, you know, that I would use this. It just kind of got a little worse, a little bit worse, a little bit worse. And then it was like, okay, I got to wash my face because I can't have this on it anymore. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that there's anything like, you know, huge to discover here is probably avobenzone, probably. That's my hunch on this because I, you know, I love chemical sunscreens and I do have sensitive skin, but that's actually the type of sunscreen that works the best for me everybody's different, right? But because I come from like the Asian beauty space, um, those sunscreens, it, they definitely do use avobenzone like in Korea and Japan, but just like not as frequently as they do in the United States. So I actually haven't used an avobenzone sunscreen in a very long time, like in a couple of years. Um, and I actually think the last one I did try, which I think was from Cosrx, that also irritated my skin. So it's a hunch. I'm not 100% sure because I also feel like I've used avobenzone with no problems in the past. But it is one of those ingredients that has a high probability of like maybe causing stinging in the eyes um, or yeah, definitely like an itchy tight feeling on the skin. So bottom line, I mean, this is not like some big thing I'm revealing about this product. It just didn't agree with my skin. And that can be very common for people with sensitive skin and these older generation chemical filters. You know, irritation um, is definitely a possibility. And so it is worth sharing um, my experience with this um, and updating you guys on that. But yeah, it's not... 
nothing new here, right? This is a pretty common experience to have. I mean, all that being said, I just really wanted to love this. You know what I mean? There was a lot of things going for it. I do think the texture, you know, my little like a little oiliness aside, I do think the texture is really nice. I do find these like fluidy types of sunscreens, these milky types of sunscreens to be um, really nice uh, textures. Uh, like I said, it had a lot going for it. It just wasn't comfy for everyday use. And um, yeah, so for me, it just kind of ended up being sort of average. And finally, it's the Inky List Oat Cleansing Balm. Now, I think I talked about this back in December. <laughs> it's been a minute. Um, and I definitely owe you guys an update. This was in my winter skincare basket tour at the time. And I definitely have some updated thoughts on this one. So there's just a few key points about why I wanted to love this. Um, the first one is definitely the price. This is about $10, uh, which is really really, really affordable, especially for a cleansing balm type of product. You know, I think in K-Beauty, they run a little closer to the $20 mark. So I found this incredibly affordable. And um, the packaging is unique as well. Most cleansing balms come in tubs where you have to use the spatula. It can get a little messy, a little bit dirty, right? A little bit like futzy, if you know what I mean. So I was really intrigued by the idea of a little bit more of a streamlined kind of squeeze tube packaging here instead of all that big bulky, you know, kind of cleansing balm jars. The other thing that intrigues me, which is something that I love about all the Inky List products, that is that this is fragrance free. I have never come across a fragrance free cleansing balm. I'm sure you guys have, uh, have, and you're gonna drop your suggestions in the info box for me below. But I really haven't found them, especially like in the K Beauty space. I have not found them at all. Um, so definitely intriguing because that is an ingredient that I prefer to avoid in my skincare products. So this is a super popular product, and I know a lot of you probably do love. This this. Um, and it is kind of getting like cult status. Like I think a lot of products from Inky List are kind of cult status at this point, but it is very popular in the skincare community. I just can't get into this product. I cannot get into it. And, and there's a, there's, there's a lot here. <laughs> um, I think that's holding me back from really enjoying this like at all. Um, one of the first things is actually something I've noticed with other Inky List products is mine was separated and that's really not a big deal at all, but I do think it's worth mentioning. Um, my product was separated and the first time I opened it out, just like liquid came out and I was like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> I don't think that's a balm. Um, so I just had to like massage the tube, right? And it actually did go back together um, pretty nicely. And now it is like it's actually a balm, so that's good. I do bring it up though because I have had products from the Inky List separate on me and not go back together after I tried to massage the tube. <laughs> retinal eye cream I'm looking at you. This is kind of like a brand issue, definitely. Um, I was really intrigued by the squeeze packaging, but I guess I changed my mind on that because at least with this texture, I really have to like make, I'm really applying a lot of pressure. It's not coming out yet. There it is, now it's coming out. See the little nub? There it is. Um, but do you see how like I'm really like really getting in there? Um, great for some like aggression relief, but yeah, I don't like having to do that every single night when I want to use a cleansing balm. Part of the reasons that it won't squeeze easily out of the tube is because it's just so darn thick. <laughs> this texture is thick like Vaseline. You know what I mean? It is like pushing Vaseline out of a tube. It's uh, definitely very thick. It actually spread. I didn't think it was going to spread really nicely across my skin. It does spread really nicely across the skin, but it still just has like a thick feeling to it. But there's actually a bigger issue here for me personally, and that's the little bits of oatmeal <laughs> in here. Okay. I, I can't get into it. I cannot get into the little scrubby bits in this. They are not super abrasive at all. This is not like very rough physical exfoliation by any means. It's not. The, it's very, very soft. It's not a lot in there, but I just really like to work balms into my skin, especially if I'm trying to break down sunscreen and makeup. I really like to be thorough and I like to massage it into my skin. But when I'm constantly massaging these little bits of oatmeal into my skin, it starts to be a little irritating. I have sensitive skin, so I don't want that. You know what I mean? And I don't think that it, it's just trying to do too much. Do you know what I mean? Like I just cleanse my skin. I don't also need exfoliation. You know what I mean? Like just do, do the one job and do it well. And I just don't feel like it does that job well either. I think this is fine for um, sunscreen, 
um, like non-waterproof sunscreen. Um, light makeup, I think it's okay. I've had trouble with eye makeup. I do not wear waterproof eye makeup, but I've had problems with it getting the mascara completely off of my face. I don't trust it for makeup. Um, it doesn't really wash away super cleanly. Of course you have to follow up with a second cleanser, but even so, I just don't feel clean with it. Do you know what I mean? I don't trust it. I just don't have that satisfying clean on my skin. You know, there is one good thing I can say about this. One thing I really noticed that um, made this actually stand out in my mind for this one reason, and is that it actually does leave your skin feeling a lot more moisturized. Um, more so than the other cleansing balms that I have tried in the past. Now, I'll be honest with you, cleansing balms and even cleansing oils are not in my mind and in my experience the cleansing products that strip your skin of moisture to begin with do you know what i'm saying like i've never had my skin feel really dry and tight from my first cleansers you know what i mean um but i've also not really experienced like feeling super moisturized and with this i do feel super moisturized but um being super duper picky here I, I would say like this isn't the the step in my skincare routine where i really am trying to infuse a lot of moisture into my skin especially if i'm going to follow up with a second cleanser right so it, it's not a huge selling point for me i guess it is definitely something i noticed it definitely did make this product unique in my mind but I'm not 100% sold because of that, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's really popular. I'm sure you, you guys are like furiously like writing a comment like this is the best thing for me and it's so affordable. And that's what I love about it. I love this brand is just making skincare so affordable and so accessible for a lot of people. Like I said, I just can't get into it. It's just not my thing, um, but a lot of people do love it. So, you know, don't completely write it off if you are interested in it, but um, hopefully me sharing my experience helps you decide if this is worth it for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video on some of the products I really wanted to love, but it just didn't quite work out. And I'm curious if there's a product that's been like that for you recently where it just didn't quite it just didn't quite do it for you. Let me know in the comment box below. If you loved today's video and maybe you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do consider subscribing, especially if this video helped you out. Um, I do release two new skincare focus videos every single week and turn on the notifications so you're never out of the loop when those videos are posted. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.